In this video, we're going to show you the best offensive coaching adjustments in Madden 23. And it's actually really simple. We're going to show you the best defensive ones while we're at it too. On offense, really quickly here, what we're going to do for our coaching adjustments. Um, you might be wondering what you do. You just click the right stick to bring this menu up in your pre-play screen. And we want to have our deep pass catching on balance, intermediate pass catching on balance, blocking on balance, ball carrier. This is up to you, but I personally think Madden 23 for the, way, the style of game that it is, you're going to want to put this on conservative. The reason why is because it's going to help prevent fumbles, specifically in tackle battles, okay? You can put this on aggressive, maybe in the goal line or something like that. You could leave it on balance if you want to try to juke and stuff. But for my money, make sure that this is on conservative. At least this is the way I'm going to be playing for the majority, at least at the beginning of the year, until we find some really good ball carrier moves. So that's offense, really simple. Defense, a little bit different. Um, and, and I want to explain kind of what all these things do and why you might want to turn these on or off. So we're bringing up the defensive pre-play adjustment uh, by hitting, clicking the right joystick in. And what you're going to see here is auto flip. The CPU will flip your defensive play to best match the offense formation. Ideally, I think that this should be on. Unless you have a specific reason for this to be off, make sure that you leave this on. This is just going to help make sure that your defense aligns properly to the formation that your offense is, uh, or the to, to the formation um, that the offense is running. The next thing is auto alignment, um, base align, man align, or default. What would you recommend? I personally think by and large default just out of the box is really good however if you want to blitz in this game um or if you want to run like dollar or big nickel or some of those slot cornerback blitzes i think they work best with base align on that's just my perspective you can also use man align against formations like trip side in to disguise your coverage where it could be man and zone it looks exactly the same so man align is helpful for those situations but right out of the box i would recommend just leaving this on default Ball and air defense, my personal uh, recommendation for ball and air defense, especially in Madden 23, because of the patches to the zones, because of how the corners play, because of field sense, because of all of those things, we're gonna put this on play ball. Why would we put this on play ball? Because it's going to mean that the, the corners are gonna animate toward the ball. Now, if you are playing somebody and they are aggressive catching you to death, they're high pointing you in the seam, they're making it really difficult for you to lurk them, then I would recommend putting this on play receiver because play receiver is gonna basically do a catch tackle animation and will oftentimes knock the ball out in those high ball situations. Quarterback matchups, at least for right now, we're gonna leave these on balanced. If you're playing a heavy man-to-man -man scheme, you might wanna put this on, um, you might wanna put this on speed, uh, but that's just something to kind of think about, okay? So we're gonna use balanced. Option defense, I think this is so important. Make sure that this is on conservative because what it's going to do is it's going to turn almost every read option into a halfback dive or inside zone, which is a lot easier to stop than, you know, never knowing what the defense is going to do. So we're going to put this on conservative. Strip ball for right now, balance. Um, if you put it on aggressive, sometimes you'll get a penalty. So that's just something to, re uh, to kind of be aware of. Tackling. This year, I actually really like aggressive tackling, but I will say if you want to just kind of be balanced, balance has typically been best over the last couple of years, but aggressive tackling is actually really good in this game. So something to know, but by and large, we're going to stay on balance for right now. And then um, the next part is probably the most important part of this video, zone drops. I personally believe in this year's game, zone drops are not like, they're not that necessary, at least right now because the pass rush is so, so juiced up, it's really, really hard um, to have the time to hit deep, deep routes on the field. However, if they're hitting you with deep crossers every play, put these on 30, and then you're gonna be able to drop them back to 30. Um, curl flats, uh, you know, I would recommend this being your deep flat, this being your short flat. So if you were double Mabeling, this is your deeper flat, this is your shorter flat. Hooks on five. Why do we like hooks on five? It does a really good job of playing underneath routes, like little quick drags, running back table routes, wheel routes, stuff like that. Very good for that. But that's a, a basic zone drop thing. But the other thing I wanna talk about here real quickly is this right here, and that is match. Match coverage by default um, or zone, zone coverage are, uh, if it's on default, that means that it is, um, it is just spot drop zone, meaning the defenders are gonna drop to their zone. I love match coverage because when I call a match play, they're they're going to match. But another really big time benefit of match coverage is you're going to get better reroutes. You're going to get better uh, coverage logic based off the routes they put on their field. So if you're running zone drops on, this still cancels match out for the most part. So this can actually be very helpful because your match coverage, 
you can reset your play at the, at the line of scrimmage to be able to reset it into a match concept. But that's just something that I'm doing from a coaching adjustment perspective. I like zone coverage set to match. If you want to run default, that's fine. But just want to explain what all these things do, why they're important. Real quick, last tip, pro tip, if you are in the red zone, do not put zone drops on past five yards because they will literally not drop into the back of the end zone. Very, very important. So zone cover set to match. That is the way that I'm running my coaching adjustments. Thanks for watching the video. And if you want to learn all of my uh, material on how to become a better Madden player, I've got a ton of eBooks that we're going to be dropping here over the course of the first couple weeks of the game. Make sure you're in our Patreon. You'll also get exclusive updates so that you're always up to date on the best material available. Thank you for watching the video. If you want to sign up for the Patreon, the link is in the description below. 10 bucks gets you access to everything over there, all of our eBooks and all of our exclusive tips.